Hello, fellow diamond painting addicts, and welcome back to Diamond Painting Anonymous. I'm Daphne, and I'm here today for this week's Whip and Chat. If you're new here, welcome. If you're not new here, welcome back. Whip, W-I-P, stands for work in progress, and this is mine. You are welcome and encouraged to go grab whatever you are working on and work alongside while I chat, or alternatively, you can treat this as a podcast and just listen while I chat. Today I'm going to be working on my Bubble Fairies Randall Spangler canvas. This is one from Diamond Art Club. I'm working on this one in conjunction with the Stoke Your Dragonfire event. This is my oldest kit. I'm slightly over halfway done, so I'm hopeful that I will get this done by the end of the month. I also have some other large projects I'm working on, but I'm going to work on this one for the Whip and Chat. So I'm going to zoom into where I'm going to be working and I will be right back. All right, let me get my timer started here. Let me get some drills picked out and we'll get started. As you can see, I'm to the fun part of the canvas. I'm gonna be working on the dragon's little face here. I've got the eyes mostly done. So I'm gonna work on filling in the little face here while we chat, or I guess while I chat. <laughs> So let me start with my life update. What's been going on in my life? Not a whole heck of a lot. It was a week of trying to get used to my new normal. So hubby left last Sunday for his new job. He stays in a hotel in the town where they're working, or at least a hotel near the town where they're working during the week. And then he came home Thursday night. So we had Friday, Saturday, and most of Sunday together before he has to go back to work. It has its pros and cons. I mean, obviously it's not fun that he's gone four days a week, but at least he gets a three-day weekend, which it has happened before that he's so far away he can't come home, even for a weekend. So that's nice. He does get to stay in a hotel by himself. He doesn't have to double up rooms, which they often make them do. So that's a, a bonus for him. And even though working 12 hours a day sucks, he at least gets all of that done in four days and then he gets to come home and have some time with family before he goes back to work for the week. So not ideal, but we're making it work, but it's definitely different for it to just be my son and I at home yeah, just, just trying to get used to our new normal. Hubby is not a fan. I mean, we you do what you got to do. But he's been looking into, seriously looking into possibly retiring from line work. I mean, we don't have enough saved up that we could afford for him to retire right now. But he could retire from line work and take up something that maybe wasn't so strenuous. We'll just have to see how things shake out as we get ready for our move. And you never know how things are going to work out. I mean, he thinks everything is going well at the job, but there's always circumstances beyond your control that can affect things. So crossing my fingers, this is going to be pretty stable for us until we're ready to move. He's been looking at when he can collect certain things, when can you collect Social Security, when can you collect CPP, how does his retirement work? Like, I don't know how all of this works either. He was reading some things and it's like, oh, well, you have to fill out paperwork. Like, who do you fill out paperwork with? Like, I get filling out paperwork for the government if, like, you're going to be old enough to collect Social Security and be eligible for Medicare and all of that. But, yeah, I just don't understand how it all works. So he's he's got some exploring and stuff to do before he can figure out what it is he wants to do because he's getting close enough that he probably will be of age to be able for to collect some of those benefits but also everything has a different benefit like I'm pretty sure his retirement age for Social Security is different from mine because I'm five years younger than him but I haven't officially looked into that so anyway just lots of stuff to think about and just kind of figure out what we want to do, how we want to live our lives. Because having him gone all the time is not fun. I mean, we didn't get married, so we could spend time apart. And we're both kind of homebodies, so while it has happened many times over us being together that he ends up having to go work somewhere else, it's still not all that fun. And I never sleep well while he's gone, so I end up being kind of sleep-deprived during the week. 
He's tired, of course, because he works hard every day. And it's getting warmer, so as it gets warmer and hotter, it'll be even less fun to work outside. Maybe we'll get lucky and we'll have a decent spring, but who knows? We did get some nice rain this week. We, <laughs> Hubby was actually hoping that he was going to get the day off because it was supposed to rain pretty much across the state all day on Thursday. And it rained here all day on Thursday, but it did not rain where Hubby was. So he still had to work most of the day. They did eventually end up finishing a bit early, but not as early as he had hoped. So. <laughs> I'm, I'm curious to see how things will go too because everything we're seeing and reading is saying that this year is going to be a very active year for tornadoes. So we'll see how that goes for us because we live basically right in the middle of Tornado Alley. They test our tornado sirens once a week, usually on Mondays at 10 o'clock. I was sitting on the couch reading on Wednesday and it was 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, I think it was 11, and the tornado sirens went off, and I thought, oh, why are the sirens going off? So I actually went and got up and looked, and there weren't, there was no weather to speak of, I mean, it was clear skies, and so I don't know if it was an extra test that they were doing. We didn't get any notifications about a test of the system or anything, I don't know if somebody accidentally set it off. So we just got an extra test of the system that week. But yeah, not not fun. There's always that initial panic when you hear the tornado sirens going off. I mean, we have a basement, so we can go to our basement, but it's still kind of scary. So we got some rain, getting used to hubby being gone. I am still tired and still recovering. Like I said, I never sleep well when hubby is gone, but also have I mentioned that I intensely dislike daylight savings? I don't understand why we still have it. They've done so many studies that show that it does not do what its intended purpose was anymore. We are so global and so plugged in these days that it's not necessary and yet we continue to have it. I don't understand why. Unfortunately, no one cares what I think, so <laughs> we're still having it. I guess at least it's spring break, so at least it is for us. I don't know if it is for everybody, but it's spring break here, so all the kids will be out of school. So hopefully that means they have that whole week, and everybody who works at a school has that whole week to kind of get used to it before they go back to work. All right, what else? Um, oh, we finally received our federal tax refund. Yay. So now <laughs> we can use it to pay a bunch of bills because we still need to pay our state taxes. So I've got to pay those. And then yay for us, this month is a bill heavy month. We get to pay both our house insurance and our car insurance are both due. The house insurance is a year but we pay almost as much, well, I guess we do pay as much now because the rates have gone up again because of course they have. Our car insurance per year is the same as our house insurance per year, which is crazy because our house insurance is gonna replace our house, which is a significant cost. Our car insurance isn't gonna replace any of our cars because if any of our cars got totaled, we would not get anywhere near what they're worth to replace them. I mean, we'd probably get a couple thousand bucks for each of our cars, except for my husband's. His is new enough, we might actually get some money for that one, but none of the rest of them. However, all of the, our, our two other cars are all paid off. So that's something I think will be interesting to see is the difference in how much we pay in Canada versus here for some of those things. Although my husband and I were looking and I actually watch a lot of stuff, read a lot of articles on things happening in Canada. And I was actually found some information on mortgages in Canada. And I told my husband, mm, we may have to sit down and, and talk about this because I just naively assumed that it basically works the same way in Canada that it does here. Now, I was watching someone who 
lives in Ontario, so I have no idea if this is a provincial thing, if this is a countrywide thing, but they were talking about the fact that Canada does not have, I think they said Canada does not have mortgages like we do here in the U.S. In that, here in the U.S., you can get a 30-year mortgage with a fixed interest rate, and that in Canada, the most you can lock in an interest rate for is five years. You could lock it in for less than that, but you can't lock it in for more than five years, which seems bonkers to me. And I haven't done any more research to see, like I said, if this is a, a Canada thing, if this is a province thing. My husband doesn't remember it being like that, but that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> he doesn't pay attention to a whole lot of that kind of stuff. Bills are usually what I'm paying attention to. As long as he's got spending money in his pocket, he's good. Anyway, can't make your mortgage for more than five years. So every five years at a minimum, your interest rate is going to change, which, like I said, seems nuts. How, how do you budget for that? And then they were talking about land transfer fees, like a portion of the transaction it is these land transfer fees that get paid anytime land changes hands, basically, anytime property changes hands. And I, I was unclear on whether it's like a seller fee or a buyer fee or both or where that money goes. So I need to do some more research on that as well. And then they were talking about blind bidding. This, in addition to the mortgage theme, seems completely bonkers to me. They were talking about a blind bidding system where basically you make a bid on a house and then... I guess the realtor or somebody comes back to you and says, okay, do you want to up your bid? But I, I didn't quite understand. Like here, if someone is bidding against you, then they'll come back to you and say, okay, they've got, and I mean, it's not like they tell you who the people are or anything. They just say, there's somebody else bidding on the property or there's multiple people bidding on the property. Here's where the bid stands. Would you like to go higher, lower? What would you like to do? Because of course, people who pay cash can often pay less because it's in cash instead of having to wait for all the bank paperwork and stuff. People who can close faster often get preference over someone like us who maybe needs to sell our house in order to have the funds to buy a new house, that kind of thing. But the way they were talking about it was basically whoever it is, the realtor, whoever comes back and says, do you wanna up your bid? But because it's a blind bidding process, they were talking about the fact that you could be bidding against yourself, which makes zero sense to me. Like, so if I'm selling my house in Canada, I can just say, well, I don't like that bid, go back and ask them if they wanna bid more. And then they don't have to say it's just the seller asking. They can pretend like it's somebody else bidding on it. That seems problematic to me for many different reasons. So, and I've never heard of that before. So that was, and again, is that a provincial thing? Those of you who live in Canada, what is that? Like, I don't, why would anybody want to put themselves in that position? I mean, because I've already told my husband, there have been several properties that we've looked at and have thought, mm, that might be cool. But I said, in, in the description, it'll say, oh, well, we're taking bids at this time and date. And I told my husband, I'm not getting into a bidding war with anybody over a piece of property. That's crazy to me. And, and maybe that's just me personally, but I'd rather rent until something comes available that I'm, I like and I'm willing to buy. But I'm not willing to get in a bidding war for anything. Because in my experience, I've, and I've seen, not that we don't have them here, but I've seen so many people, you end up spending way more money than you intended to get into this house because you get into this bidding mentality. And you're, people, you already make so many compromises when you're buying a house. I mean, unless you're mega rich and you're building a house to your own specifications, I don't think anybody gets a perfect house. There's always going to be something you compromise on, whatever that is. The thought of already making compromises and then getting into a bidding war for a house that I'm already compromising on? Mm -mm, no, thank you. I'd rather just buy a piece of property and plop a trailer on it or something, <laughs> quite honestly. And I mean, there's lots of options these days. There's, Hubby and I have talked for a long time about getting a, not a tiny house, but a small house, a much smaller house than we currently live in. 
and we've joked many times about buying some property and basically starting a little tiny house community with our family members <laughs> and just having like a communal building, like maybe a metal building that has like a bathroom and a kitchen and a, a gathering space. And then everybody else can have their own little tiny home, basically small home so that we all have our own spaces, but we can all be together. I would love that actually. Don't know that that's how things are gonna work out, but I can dream. I'm still trying to convince my daughter to move up there with us. She's, she's not having any of it so far. So I told my husband, we're just gonna have to make sure that whatever we're doing, we are making enough money that it, we can fly back and forth or we can fly her back and forth so that she can come visit us. You know, she works for a school, so I was initially like, oh, well, that'll be cool because she's off during major holidays, Thanksgiving and Christmas. I think she gets a whole week off at Thanksgiving, so she'd have the whole week of Thanksgiving. She gets like two weeks off at Christmas. But then I was like, what am I saying? We never travel at those times because those are the busiest times to travel, which means it's horrendous to travel because it's super busy and also it's super expensive because everybody's traveling then. But she's also would be off in the summers, so maybe she could spend more time with us in the summer. I don't know. Honestly, her staying here while we move up there is the, the part I'm struggling with the most, which I tell myself I've just been super lucky in that most of my family has remained close. I know it's not like that for everybody. There are plenty of families that are flung all over the place from one coast to the other. I mean, that's how my... My grandparents' family was. My, my grandparents, well, my grandparents, my dad's side. My dad stayed local and one of his sisters stayed local, but the other sister was all over the place, lived in at least five different states I can think of. And on my mom's side, my mom stayed local, but her sister has lived, I think, in at least six or seven states. So I've just gotten lucky that that my kids have, I mean, my son hasn't moved out yet, so, but he's still in school, but lucky that that the rest of my family, my siblings and my kids have stayed close, so I know it's not like that for everybody, and who knows how long my son will stay wherever he is once he graduates. I mean, I know he's going to move with us to Canada, but I don't know what he's going to do when we get up there, so yeah, just going to be interesting for all of us. Anyway, so hubby and I were talking about all of this mortgage stuff. We do have, um, he's got, it's a friend of his brother's and that is a realtor who, who has offered to help us out when we get up there to help us find, he's, he actually owns some rental properties if we want to rent from him for a bit until we can figure out what we're going to do, which I initially, I really want to just move up there and move into where we're going to be. But I realized that's going to be a lot more difficult than I actually thought about. So we may end up like renting someplace for a year or two and then seeing what's available. I really hate to do that because I feel like I'm wasting money on rent. But who knows? Maybe we'll rent and decide that's what we want to do and we don't want to spend money buying a property. I mean, there's a lot of pluses to renting lets us get settled in there and kind of get our feet on the ground. My son and I living in someplace new and all that kind of stuff without being thrust into whatever goes along with home ownership and upkeep and mortgages and all that kind of stuff. Property taxes and who knows what that we would have to deal with. And I mean, I'm sure we could figure it out, but it does sound nice not to have to deal with all of that to start with. But it does just feel like throwing money away, which it isn't, but that's just what it feels like. I've never lived really in an apartment though. I, well, I guess I can't say that. I lived in an apartment for about a year, but it was a year while we were waiting for the house to be built. So I don't know. It doesn't feel the same, I guess. We knew it was, well, we didn't intend for it to be a year when we moved in. We thought it was going to be way less than that just ended up taking way longer than we thought to build the house, which that's typical, but we didn't know that at the time. Anyway, yeah, may, may be a lot of changes for me. We'll see. 
maybe we're just going to get a, a small house and put it on some property somewhere and I'll have like a little she shed that's my diamond painting space. Who knows? I mean, it's scary, but also exciting at the same time. And it's coming up way too quickly. I actually intended to spend some time this week while my husband was gone working on the house. That did not happen, unfortunately. I'm not going to beat myself up too badly about that. Like I said, I it was a lot of getting used to him being gone. That's not, gosh, I'm trying to remember when the last time he actually left for any significant amount of time routinely to work. Because, you know, he'll go on storms, but he's gone for two or three weeks and then he's back. And then he's back to his regular job. This time it's going to be his regular job is him being gone. Now he did go work for, I think, almost six months. But that's been, gosh, 10 years ago almost, I think, we figured out since he had to do that that he was out in California and just living out there and working out there because there was nothing available back here. So we've done it, but it's not fun. And admittedly, I put off some things that I needed to get done. I really need to get my hair cut. <laughs> Although I called my hairstylist and she did not answer her phone. Usually if she's gonna be on vacation or something, she'll leave a message that says she's on vacation. There was no message this time. So I don't know if she went on spring break early or what, she and her husband, traveled to Hawaii quite frequently so they may have got tired of the snow and just taken off for Hawaii for a week or so but she usually leaves a message so that people know that anyway so I wanted to try and get in next week didn't get a hold of her so I need to get that scheduled and then my son and I were supposed to go in for our regular dental cleanings in January and the day we were supposed to go in, we had a really big snowstorm that literally shut down a whole bunch of roads. So we didn't make it in. And I just keep forgetting to call them back. I mean, I don't like going to the dentist anyway. So I'm sure that has something to do with how often I forget. But we really do need to get in and get it done. And But they're only open four days a week. They're closed on Friday. So of course, the day I think to call is always on Friday when they're not there. So I've written myself a bunch of additional notes and put them in various places. So hopefully I can guilt myself into actually calling and getting it scheduled because I need to. I know we need to go in. I just don't enjoy going to the dentist. Like, does anyone enjoy going to the dentist? I don't think I've ever met anyone who actually enjoyed going to the dentist. I've been lucky the last couple, three times I think that I've gone in that I haven't had to have any additional work done and I'm afraid I'm about to hit the wall and she's going to tell me I need some something major done so that's probably why I'm subconsciously avoiding it as well. Kind of just another boring week in the life of a diamond painting. I don't know I can't really call my I don't like to call myself a stay-at-home mom. My kids aren't little. I mean one of my kids has already moved out. One of them's about to graduate college but I'm not really an empty nester because one of my kids is still here. I'm not really a retiree. I'm not really, I mean, I don't work, but I don't like to call myself unemployed. That makes it sound like I'm, I'm unintentionally unemployed and that's not true. I'm just choosing not to work. I could have a job. I'm just choosing not to. So what do you call that? I'm a woman of leisure. Is that what I would call it? <laughs> Who knows? Okay. Where am I at here? I think I've got most of the face. Oh, I missed a green one there. So let me fill that one in. I'll try and fill in this little section here. Did I miss any in the eyes? Nope, I think I got the eyes all filled in. Okay. This one is turning out so cute. I absolutely love the colors. I love the colors. You can't see them, but I love the colors. The, these shades of pink and, and like mulberry here that are in the pillow the dragling is resting on. So cute. Although I'm kind of excited because I think this, this row is basically halfway through. So I'm a little over halfway, but I'm kind of excited to see once I get above this section to see what it's going to look like, because I'm hoping it's going to be more multi-placing than confetti because the background at the back is like the castle and the curtains and there are some bubbles and a fairy and things like that, but I'm hoping it'll be more multi-placing than all of the bubbles and everything have been down here at the bottom. It's turning out really cute though, so I'm really happy with it. 
kind of kicking myself that I haven't done it before now. I think I just put it off. I don't really know why I put it off. I don't know if it's because at the time I had so many Spanglers and I just didn't know where to start. I don't know if I initially put it off because it was a square. I think maybe subconsciously I was putting off squares because it seems like most of the ones that I have left are squares. Like of my five oldest, this one's a square, Universe in a Jar is a square, Belly Dancer is a square. The other two, my Jasper C and my Diamond Painting Deutschland are rounds. So maybe that wasn't the only reason, but I think at one time I had like 11 or 12 Spangler canvases. I've since given away several of them, so I don't have as many anymore. How many do I have left? I have this one in Universe in a Jar. I've got the Literate Dragon, the Afternoon Tea, Treasure Quest, and Sunday Delight. I think those are the only ones I have left. So I have six, which isn't a huge amount. I think at one time I had 11 or 12 of them. So I've seen a couple recently, but none, none that I wanted to get. Did I just jump into this? Okay, so we're into my diamond painting update. If I didn't mention that, I can't remember. Anyway, so I've been working on this one. I'm over halfway through, like I said. So I think I'm going to be able to get this one done this month. I would like to get to Universe in the Jar, which is the other old Spangler that I have. Not old, but my oldest, the oldest in my stash. I don't know if I'll get to that one because I also do definitely want to spend some time getting caught up on my Josephine wall. I am super far behind where I wanted to be with that one. And for those of you who have been commenting that, you know, I shouldn't worry so much about how fast I'm going. It should just be something I enjoy and all of that. First of all, thank you. I appreciate that. It is fun. If I sound like I'm not having fun, I don't mean to. I do enjoy all of my diamond painting time, regardless of what I'm working on. Having said that, because I have the YouTube channel, I do set goals for myself, which I might do anyway. I don't know, but it's probably, I probably do it more because of the channel. And I need content because I'm running the YouTube channel. I need to have things to show you guys. And some days, some weeks, it's a struggle to figure out what to talk about, what to say, what to video. I try to, when the iron is hot, so to speak, or my muse is, is speaking to me, to write down a whole bunch of ideas so that when my mojo decides to dry up, that I have some ideas written down. This year has been kind of interesting for me because... I'm doing a lot of large projects this year, and that's not usual for me. Since I've had the channel, I have done a lot of smaller projects. So I would tend to do a lot more unboxings. I would do more smaller projects, just because having to have multiple videos each week means I don't have as much time as other creators and other niches do to come up with content. For a lot of people, they're creating one video a week. I'm doing four a week. Now, for at least one of those, which is this video, when I'm doing a whip and chat, what am I doing? I'm basically just diamond painting while I'm chatting. So coming up with content for that is not a big deal, other than I try to make some notes on what I'm talking about so it's not just a random ramble the whole time that I'm talking. Although I do have those, but I try to, to write some notes so it's in some kind of a coherent order so that you guys aren't just following my crazy train of thought. <laughs> because some days my brain is a very interesting place to be. Anyway, yeah, I, it's been kind of a weird year for me trying to come up with ideas, which I will say, I feel like I've been more creative this year. So I am liking that. But because I'm working on more large projects. I just don't have like I don't have as many unboxings or as many kitting ups or kit downs or finishes as I have had in years past because I'm just not working on as many small projects. I could work on small projects. It's not that. It's just that I haven't been. So that's kind of forced me to branch out maybe in ways I wouldn't have before, which is a good thing. It's always nice to kind of stretch yourself and force yourself to think Think outside the box, as they're always saying. 
I don't know what box. Who, who who put us all in this box? So in addition to working on scripts and ideas and things like that, I've also been trying to look ahead and kind of figure out my schedule. I sit down at the beginning of the year and kind of go through, okay, here's some things that I definitely want to do this year. I set goals that I want to achieve, whatever that looks like, and then work on those through the year. But I also sit down at the beginning of the year and kind of make a calendar of when things are going to happen. Just so I have some sort of guideline, does that mean everything is going to happen in the order that it appears on my calendar? No, definitely not. can already tell you I've made some pretty big changes to some things because things just didn't happen the way that I anticipated they would. And, and it's okay that they didn't. But So anyway, the point of all this was I was trying to look ahead and see what's coming up because it's March, which means next month is April, which boggles my mind. How am I already into April? So that means I need to look at my stash because what does that look like? I need to see what events are coming up. April is April. I think April and May is a J-Wall event. And I'm definitely going to still be working on my Josephine Wall. So maybe I'll participate in that event. I'm still hopeful that I can get it done by May or June. I may not. Maybe I won't, and that's okay. It won't be the end of the world. I'll be disappointed if I don't, but it won't be the end of the world. So April and May, J Wall, and then June is DP for Pets coming up. And you guys, I can't, I mean, I've already done some stuff for it behind the scenes, but I need to do some more things. I've got to get prizes together. I, I don't think I'm going to rework any of the rules or anything for this year maybe in the future and I may rework some of the stuff for DP for veterans in November that just depends on whether we've actually made it to Canada like we hope because I don't know what things are going to be like when we get to Canada I've been looking at ways to ship from from Canada to the U.S. or from the U.S. to Canada mostly from Canada to the U.S. but also the other way around I don't somebody recommended Shipsy I think but Shipsy only works for British Columbia, Quebec, and Ontario. And I'm going to be in the Maritimes. So that does not work for me. So we'll have to see. I told my husband, maybe we're going to be, I think it's like a six, six and a half hour drive to the border. So it may just be that wherever we are, we're like, you know what? We're going to take off this weekend. We're going to take a three day weekend and we're going to go stay in Maine somewhere. And I'm going to do some shopping and pick up some stuff or get some things shipped to me or whatever. I don't know. It'll it'll be an adventure. I'm looking forward to it. That got off tangent quick. DP for Pets is coming up in June, so make sure you mark your calendars for that. I'll try to post something here in the next couple of weeks on my socials about it. Probably I'll pin something in the Facebook group, so if you're not in the Facebook group, go join that, and then I'll pin something to the featured posts with some some details about it. I mean, it's basically going to run the same as last year and the year before. Like I said, I don't think I'm going to make a bunch of big changes or anything. So, But you need a pet-themed canvas, so pick up one of those. Anything animal works, and that includes mythical animals. Like I said, I, I'm not too picky about what people do. I know that there can be some themes that are super hard to find canvases for, the veterans event being one of them, but... I'm pretty flexible. If you can come up with a reason why it works, then I'll probably believe you. Does anybody else do this when you finish a section? You like run your fingers over it because you can tell with your fingers if there's a drill that's not seated quite right. Plus it just feels cool. Okay, I'm almost done with, well, I'm done with its cute little face. I just have to finish this little horn up here. But I'm done with its cute little face. Is there anything else? How long have I been talking? Probably too long, okay. Is there anything else I wanted to tell you guys? I definitely spent more time diamond painting this week with Hubby Gone, so I am hopeful that I'm gonna make up some pretty significant time just diamond painting wise, I hope. I do need to spend some time going through our house and figuring out what we're getting rid of, what we're keeping and all that kind of stuff, but I'm not gonna get too upset if that doesn't happen either. I'm not quite sure how this is gonna work out for us either. I'm actually thinking now that maybe what's going to end up happening is like hubby will take a week off work, we'll pack up everything and move up there. 
and then hubby will stay here and work. We'll try and sell the house while no one's in it. Although I hate to have no one in it. I mean, I guess he could come back here for the weekends, but it would be empty during the week while he's gone, which doesn't sound that appealing either. So I don't know. It sounds kind of scary to just stay here until we sell the house. And then once the house sells, pack up and move everything to we don't know where. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know what we're going to do. I don't know how much we're going to pack up either. Because there are days when I'm like, no, I'm definitely going to pack all this stuff. And then there are days where I'm like, nope, we're just going to leave it all behind and start all over because I don't want to pack it all. It's too much trouble. Let me zoom out here so you guys can see what I've done. So I still have this little horn on the drag wing to finish, but look at its cute little face. It's big eyes with its eyelashes. So cute. I love how it's just reclining here. And I, you can see a little bit of the pillow here. I love the colors in this pillow. Okay, I think that's everything I wanted to tell you guys. Let me check my notes one more time. Yeah, I think that's it. That's it for me today, guys. Thanks so much for sticking around till the end of the video. Before you leave, don't forget to do all the things. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and hit that bell notification icon so that you can be informed of future uploads. And as always, guys, thanks so much for watching.